What's up guys, welcome back. We got part two of how to tune your eighth gen. Uh, we already went over the ignition high and ignition low. So these are the same tables that I made before in part one. If you haven't checked out part one, definitely check out part one first, because this is gonna be setting up the ignition base map. But now we're gonna go into the knock control, that way you can actually use these values because from the factory, Honda builds in this knock control formula that's completely useless, it's completely garbage. Any tuner who uses it, I don't understand why. Um, but either way, we're always tuning for a specific type of fuel. So if you're tuning on 91 or 93 octane, either way, this map is going to be fine for either one of those, by the way. But if you're tuning for a specific octane, you don't need knock control. Um, these are just the values that the car is always going to pull. Before, I'll show you the knock control here. So this is part of the formula knock ignition limit. There's a huge formula that this all plugs into at these different RPMs and loads. It'll like multiply this by a percentage multiplier of how many knocks you've had and then it goes into the knock retard column here pulls out a certain amount of this much timing and uses a whole bunch of like nonsense percentage formulas we're not going to worry about any of that so i'll show you how to disable knock control right now you go to knock ignition limit then you're going to highlight everything adjust and then you're going to change this to 60 degrees so what this is gonna do, since 60 is higher than any value we have on the table, as you can see, highest value we have is 40 on the low and high. So since 60 degrees is higher than any of these other numbers, this is automatically gonna play a part in canceling out the knock control formula. So you're just gonna select all this, control C. You're gonna paste this on all of the different cam angles up here, 20, 30, 40. You're going to go to knock ignition limit high, same deal, paste 60, 60. And this is just going to bypass the knock control. Now you're going to go to knock retard. And all of these numbers, we don't want it to retard any ignition. We want it to just pull exactly what's on the table. So we're going to highlight everything, right click, adjust, zero. And do that for knock retard high. Okay, so knock control is now disabled. So when you get to the specific load and RPM that you put in this table, it's gonna pick four columns and it's gonna average them out and it's gonna pick this timing. So if we're at this load right here, it'll be probably around 27 degrees, maybe 28 or so. Um, either way, it depends on the load, but we're gonna bypass the knock control. Um, and then knock sensitivity, I like to leave it how it is because this will still tell you if it's actually knocking. Um, on some of the other cars, like the ninth gens, the knock sensor is super sensitive and you can't even adjust this. So on the eighth gens, if you want to just bump all these to like 204, that pretty much cancels out the knock sensor reading. I like to have it still read from the stock values though. It is somewhat accurate. A pull will, a pull will still make more power with like a couple knocks because they're not actually real knocks um, with this stock formula here. So kind of take with that as you will, it's up to you. I personally like to leave it. If I am getting knocks, I'll dial it back a little bit. Uh, same thing, low and high. If you want to edit it to like 204, that'll cancel everything out because that's like 200%. So that pretty much makes the knock sensor not, not sense anything. Um, other than that, let's see. We can go ahead and do cam angles, same video. Uh, this is still going to be a pretty quick one. For the cam angles. So there's a crucial, crucial step you have to do to do a pre VTEC crossover on these cars. And that'll get you like a growl right before VTEC when the cam's in its full efficiency. We'll go ahead and start with high because it's easier. So this is gonna be your VTEC cam angles. Now the HN is equipped with a 50 VTC on the intake cam. So this is pretty good starting out. Um, I personally like to have it not start tapering off till about 5,500 or so. Every car is gonna behave a little bit differently, but for a good rule of thumb, VTEC point, we're gonna have it around 4,500. So when it cracks into VTEC, right at 50 degrees, peak cam performance right there. And then this is a little low actually for the top end. So I'll go to 8,500. And I like to change these to about like 23 to 26. Every car is gonna be different. That's why it requires tuning. But just for base map purposes, um, we'll go ahead and grab it from 5,500. We'll change this to 50 as well. 
and then we're going to highlight all of those rows there at 5,500, go down to 8,500, and then we're going to right click, interpolate vertically, and that'll smooth all of that out. So as the RPMs progress up, the cam angle decreases. This might be a little aggressive. So for instance, if you want to do, you know, try it a little more conservative, you could change these to like 45. And then if you wanted to start tapering from 5,000 to 8,500, you could do this as well. This might perform better. Every car is different. So uh, it really depends. But for a general rule of thumb, you want as close to the peak cam angle at the VTEC crossover. For low speed cam angle, we're gonna, well, go ahead and set the VTEC point. That way we are building off of something. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go into VTEC. It's got 4250, 5900. So what this is pretty much at a certain load, it'll kick the VTEC in at 4250. But if you're lighter on the throttle, it won't kick it until 5900. I like to just do a straight up old school, hard cross 4500. Um, you can do an upper at 5,000 if you want, but that's just gonna kind of save you gas if you're at partial throttle high RPMs, but let's be real. Partial throttle high RPMs isn't really a real world experience. We don't usually do that. This is the different pressures that it'll kick in um, based on the different load. If you have a window set up here, this is how you can change how much pressure to actually kick it in. Keep in mind, full throttle is gonna be about 0 0.9, 0 0.95. So anything over 0 0.8 will trigger this, it'll kick in. VTEC points at 4,500. So what we're gonna do is pre-advance the cam. That way the VTEC crossover is more seamless and you're already, the VTC is already at its optimal point when VTEC kicks in. So what we're gonna do, since we went ahead and set everything to 45 degrees on cam angle high at the VTEC point, we're going to go to 4,500 to 5,000, this, this kind of area where it's gonna kick in and we're gonna match that. So we're gonna do 45 because the VTEC points at 4,500. So um, now what you wanna do, these cam angles are pretty good. I mean, I'd say 30 is pretty decent. Um, this is relatively makes sense for the most part. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try and get the cam to kind of spool up gradually, the VTC at least. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this uh, from 27 here. Actually, you know, for, you know, for simplicity's sake, we'll just make these up to 30. And then we're going to select at 3,500, bring it down to 4,500, right click, interpolate vertically. And as you can see, when you're in these high load columns, the cam will slowly start to pre-advance. By the time it gets to 4,500, it'll be commanding 45. It'll probably already be about 42 or so, so it'll pretty much be there. And then when VTEC kicks at 45, boom, you're right at 45 degrees right where you wanna be. So that'll make the VTEC kick over a lot seamless um, a lot more seamless, I should say. But other than that, yeah, that's not control, cam angles. We set up a little bit of VTEC. Uh, if you guys want another video, make sure you drop a like. We got to get the likes up and then I'll drop a new one. And then part three, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do yet, but uh, either way, it'll be a surprise. But we're going to keep building on this. I'm eventually going to go into the live tuning. Um, I have, I've thought about doing some live stream tuning as well, if you guys are interested. So if you are, make sure you drop a comment. Let me know if you want to see some live tunes. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a good one.